Hello to all of my geeks, Dante D here, and welcome to another edition of Geekery with Dante D, the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. If you're watching this as a YouTube video, please go and check out our podcast. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please go and check out our YouTube channel as well. And for those of you that uh, have been longtime viewers of this channel, you're probably looking at me right now thinking, what is he talking about? What podcast? Well, that's right. Dante D is going on the radio. That's right. We are launching a Geekery with Dante D podcast. So all of the great content that you're seeing on this channel, every all the discussions that you are seeing will also be available in your favorite podcast directory. So if you want to listen to me on your way to work or when you're working out, or whenever, feel free to check out the Geekery with Dante D podcast. And of course, we're going to always continue to be posting videos on our YouTube channel as well. Today, what are we talking about? We're talking about Star Wars, the High Republic. And essentially why I have abandoned this uh, this new publishing initiative by uh, Lucas Books and by uh, Disney and, and, and Star Wars all, all together. So for those of you uh, that are listening or watching that don't know anything about the High Republic, essentially what this is, is a uh, publishing initiative that was launched by, um, by Lucasfilm and Lucas Books about a year ago now. I think, uh, I think we're coming up on the one year anniversary of uh of the high republic and originally this was a much hyped about initiative it was originally called project luminous and it was very very top secret well uh in january 2020 actually no we're going on two years i think anyway january 2020 uh the initiative the high republic launched with the very first book in the series called The Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule. And this was supposed to take place about 200 years before the Battle of Yavin and is supposed to examine the golden age of the Jedi, right? The, the Jedi, that hence the High Republic, when the Republic was at the height of its power, when everything was perfect, everything essentially couldn't go wrong, and the Jedi were uh, at the height of of their strength. So when this hit, when news of this dropped, I saw a bunch of YouTube videos calling out the High Republic as woke BS. There were just so many videos out there that were criticizing this new publishing initiative. And um, all these criticisms were coming from people that hadn't even tried it out, hadn't even read any of the content from the High Republic. They were just blindly calling it woke BS, right? Because I think people are very sensitive now when it comes to new Star Wars content because they're expecting it to be a certain way just based on uh, what they've been seeing in, in the movies and uh, some of the other uh, new canon novels that they've been releasing. But I'm not like that. I don't just look at something and say, hmm, that's BS. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to read it. No, I, I like to give things a try because I am a huge fan of the Star Wars franchise and I will always give it a try before I pass any judgment. Well, I did read, uh, Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule and Charles Soule is an amazing amazing Star Wars writer. I don't think there's, he's done Star Wars comics. He, he's uh, actually really known for um, his Darth, Darth Vader series uh, that he did for Marvel Comics. And uh, actually of all the Darth Vader content from Marvel Comics that I've read so far, I really, really think Charles Soule's uh, run on Darth Vader was just outstanding. He's just a great writer, comic book writer and, and novelist. So I wasn't surprised that when I picked up Light of the Jedi that I was just in love with it. It was it was a great book. It was intriguing. Uh, the care I have to say the the characters 
Um, the, the characters weren't super inspiring, but I kind of expected that from a book that had multi points of view. Okay. You had these, these, these types of books have, are, are told from numerous points of view. So I understand that it's very hard to develop a character when you only have so many pages and so many POV chapters. But nevertheless, the plot was riveting. It was exciting. It was original. I really, really enjoyed it. It was just great. And I was so excited to read other High Republic content and other High Republic books. And you know that if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that because I actually posted a review on Light of the Jedi not too long after it came out, praising it. I loved it. Well, after Light of the Jedi, I uh, I went and I checked out Claudia Gray's novel. And Claudia Gray is another, she's another amazing Star Wars writer. Uh, for a while, people were calling her the queen of Star Wars because she's just put out some of the best Star Wars novels probably ever. Uh, you know... To name a few, we had uh, Lost Stars, uh, Bloodlines uh, that, with, uh, with Princess Leia, uh, Leia, Princess of Alderaan. And my personal favorite is Master and Apprentice, which follows Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn in uh, the early days of Obi-Wan Kenobi's apprenticeship with Qui-Gon Jinn. And it really kind of examines the the relationship between between the two that's that's really strained at that point. It was I just thought it was brilliant. So well done. So I was expecting big things out of Claudia Gray's High Republic book, which I believe is called Into the Dark. Uh and what ended up happening was I read it maybe halfway through and I abandoned it. It just it just wasn't it wasn't capturing me, it wasn't riveting me. I I, I found it kind of boring. Which I was really surprised because, like I said, Claudia Gray is an amazing writer, and I and I and I love her stuff. But I'm not the type of person that if I like a book, that I'll tough it out to the end. If I don't like it, I I will can it after you know halfway through. So at that point, I wasn't turned. This is not why I was turned off from the the High Republic. Uh, at that time, I was kind of attributing my dislike to the fact that. Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule was an adult book and Claudia Grace was a young adult novel. So I thought maybe the, the difference in the genre is kind of what uh, caused that that difference in opinion that I had between the, new, the two novels. So when Kevin Scott's novel came out, Rising Storm, uh, I was just... I was just so excited. I couldn't wait to get my hands... On this book and Kevin Scott uh, he's he's another well-known writer he's done comic books he's done uh, novels uh, the most recent work that I've read by Kevin Scott was uh, Dooku Jedi Lost which actually wasn't even a, a novel it's a uh, kind of like an audio drama and I read it it was okay I got through it. I read the whole thing. I also uh, listened to the uh, the audiobook because it's 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 acted out and it was actually quite well done. Uh, but to me, it just wasn't anything special. But I thought, okay, I liked High Republic, Light of the Jedi, so you know maybe Rising Storm. It's going to continue what Charles Soule started. So let's check it out. It's probably going to be really really great. So I ended up getting this this book, uh, Rising Storm. Uh, for Father's Day this past year, because it, it launched in, uh, I believe it was like June, end of June or something like that, uh, along with uh, my own copy of uh, Light of the Jedi, because uh, my family knew that I really liked Light of the Jedi. Actually, the first my first time around, uh, I read it from the library. So they bought me my own copy, and they got me Rising Storm. So naturally, before reading Rising Storm, I had to read Light of the Jedi again just because I, I liked it that much. Read it again. Didn't take me too long. Enjoyed it as much the second time as uh, I did the first time. And then I dove into Rising Storm. And 
boy, was it a bummer for me. <laughs> now, if you go on Goodreads uh, or you, you read other reviews of this book, there are a lot of people that really enjoyed this book, Rising Storm. Uh, I wasn't one of them. And uh, the, I guess the nature of the High Republic publishing initiative became very evident to me. Uh, as well as uh, I started to see it more as the initiative as a whole rather than just an individual novel. I'm telling you, the High Republic just dragged, or sorry, the Rising Storm just dragged on for me, dragged on for a really long time. I don't think I've ever read a book this slow in my life, except for maybe um, A Dance with Dragons <laughs> in the, the fifth uh, Song of Ice and Fire book. That was another one that I just kind of, I, I, I dragged through it. I trudged through it like really slow. Uh, but I finished A Dance with Dragons. Can't say the same for Rising Storm. Uh, I abandoned it, believe it or not, three quarters of the way through. Uh, usually I abandon books. If I am going to ab abandon a book, it'll be halfway through. Uh, in this case... Because it was High Republic, I, I, I just wanted to see if things got better, but they didn't. I was bored to tears. I was bored out of my mind, which I, I was even surprised. I'm like, how can I be bored with this? This is basically continuing the story from what Charles Soule set up. And then I realized that I think the story that Charles Soule set up in Light of the Jedi worked better just as a standalone story. Uh, I, I, I don't think the characters and the villains uh, are interesting enough to make a series out of. That's, that's just my opinion so far. And I'll get into that a little bit more. So let's start off with the villains. The main villains in uh, in the High Republic books are they're like a group of marauders, pirates, space pirates, whatever the heck you want to call them. They're called the Nile. To me, essentially, they're space pirates. I'm sorry, we've seen space pirates in Star Wars before. Uh, I feel that space pirates are a go-to villain on top of Huts and the Sith. <laughs> uh, they're, they're everywhere. Right. Uh, it just wasn't anything special to me. Like, there are certain things that are different about them, like uh, like the whole uh, they, the hyperspace route powers. And I'll let you guys kind of read for yourself if you want to. Um, I don't want to deter you from reading this at all. I'm just kind of here to tell you why I'm kind of turned off uh, to this initiative now. But, you know, they, there is there are slight um, aspects to the Nile that are supposed to make them stand out among your average space pirates. But, and, and I saw that in Light of the Jedi, but to me, it kind of got old by the time you got to Rising Storm. They just, they weren't interesting enough. So in Rising Storm, uh, they are attacking this Republic fair because the the Republic uh, is still in its, in its it's still expanding. It's kind of like this new frontier type of um, situation with the Republic and they're expanding to other worlds and there are all these new worlds that are joining the Republic and they're trying to get even other worlds to join. So they have this fair to kind of show off how great the Republic is and the, and the Nile attack. Uh, it just wasn't, it wasn't interesting to me. And it, like I said, it's just, I find that the space pirate archetype to be a little generic and a little boring. It wasn't in the first one because of um because of just what happened with the with the explosion and uh all the bits of the the pieces of the ship that contained people in it and they were essentially becoming like Armageddon Bruce Willis asteroids that were going to destroy all these planets. It, it was kind of cool. Uh, but now, okay, so you're gonna you're gonna attack the the Renaissance Fair, like the you're gonna attack the Republic Fair. It just uh, it it just was lame 
to me. I, I didn't really enjoy it. Now, you can make up for a not so great plot by having outstanding characters. How exactly? If you look at, for example, um, Quentin Tarantino, like his films, uh, there really isn't a lot to the story. Like the stories in Tarantino films are not very complex, but what makes them so interesting and so riveting uh, and so enjoyable to watch, yeah, is the violence, because the violence is kind of, it's almost kind of comical, but the character development is stellar and, and the characters are just so enjoyable to watch. Okay. That's not the case here. So you have a lackluster plot that I did not feel was enjoyable at all. And then you compound it with characters that are just so boring. I found them so boring. Like th there's nothing interesting about them at all. The only character that was somewhat interesting in this book is the Jedi Elzar Mon. Uh, and he kind of is experimenting a little bit with the dark side here. Like uh, he has a relationship with, with a woman in the book. And uh, as you know, the Jedi aren't allowed to have relationships. And he was the most interesting and I probably would have tolerated the book a little better if it just followed him. <laughs> but the rest, I, I didn't really care about. Uh, Stellan Geos, uh, who is another Jedi, he is just boring as hell. Like, he's the biggest goody-goody Jedi you'll ever meet in your life. And um, didn't care. Didn't care for him. Uh, Bel Zedifar just pretty much from what I read, was just kind of, you know, moping over loading Great Storm. Uh, Loading Great Storm is also in the book, but I, again, you know, he's captured at, by the Nile at this point, and I don't even know what ends up happening to him because, like I said, I abandoned the book. It just wasn't interesting to me. Um, but on top of that, I mean, there's, there's, there's even more. Uh, the, the main reason I don't didn't like this book, and now I'm just turned off to it because I don't want to read about the Nile anymore. And I don't want to read about these characters anymore because I don't care. Uh, I don't like Elzar Mon enough uh, to read the other, anything else that they put out for the High Republic. And then on top of that, there's also the issue of uh, the identity politics that they throw in these books. Now, this is something that we've talked about on this channel before, uh, identity politics and uh, and tokenism, uh, and I'm, I'm going to swipe that word from my, my friend, Ben from star Wars timeline, um, tokenism. He actually did a whole video. I really highly recommend, uh, watching it. It's at star Wars timeline is his channel's name on YouTube. Uh, and he did a, a video about, uh, about tokenism in, in star Wars. And I thought it was great, but, uh, there's, there's a lot of that now in, in star Wars and People will just freely point at you if you're not okay with that type of content and say you're a bigot. Uh, I, I think that's that's very, it's very analytically lazy to call someone a bigot for not liking the identity politics that's in Marvel right now and even uh, Star Wars. I mean, heck, people just went nuts uh, over all of the uh, the identity identity politics and um, the social issues in included in the uh, the sequel trilogy. Yes, there is some of that now in uh, in the High Republic. You got a little bit of it in Light of the Jedi. Didn't really take away from the story though, uh, and now. I feel like every character in this book is now gay. <laughs> like, uh, you have the um, you have the Chancellor of the Republic's son who's gay. You have the mayor of this one town who's gay. You have this like rogue Jedi uh, who I think she's a Twi'lek. I think she's either bi or gay. Then you have the those two industrialists. They're gay. Like, it's just and that's fine. You want to you want to put in gay characters. That's okay, but it's just they they they're pushing so hard 
to have these types of characters in the book it seems like they're just putting it in there now to fill a quota and it's it's kind of getting ridiculous and i feel that it's really cheapening the book it really kind of puts the fact that these books are and, and these stories are put together by a panel rather than than an individual and uh really shows the uh the bureaucracy and the corporatism now that's involved in in star wars it really puts that front and center now yeah star wars has always been a corporation right and uh and all of even the legends novels from the bantam era of, of star wars they had to have a seal of approval by an editor and even george lucas himself for for some of them but i feel that back in the day there was a little bit more individualism with these books and uh there was a little bit more freedom there there weren't so many chefs trying to cook the soup okay uh i feel now with the high republic there, there is even video proof of these stories being crafted by a panel online when they did a highlight of the high republic you can even see it on youtube just search the high republic uh they show all these writers at skywalker ranch talking about how the story is going to go okay uh so now they're trying to meet quotas to include diverse characters and uh and to include also sexual minorities and again i really think it cheapens it it, it really cheapens these books uh because it's just it's not it's not subtle okay uh you know people people that are kind of liking this content i don't know any let me know if you if, if you're enjoying the inclusion of this type of content in uh in your in your star wars books or even in your marvel comics not again not that i don't want to see it i i don't mind seeing it it's it's the way they're going about it right now make it subtle okay um how to make it subtle you know, I'm not just critic criticizing here, but there is a way to make it subtle. If you look at uh, E.K. E. K. Johnston, or Johnson, one of the two, was Johnson or Johnston, uh, who wrote the Ahsoka book, canon book, um, there's a character in that book where the uh, it, it, it's more subtle. She's a sexual minority, but it's it's subtle. It's not in your face, and, and and it's it's not gone. It's not written in a way that look at this, look at me, uh, look how uh, inclusive I've being I'm being by including gay characters. Uh, the High Republic, Rising Storm. It was just like okay, going through a checklist. Okay, this character is gonna be gay. This one's gonna be straight. This one's gonna be bi. Um, you know, so on and so forth. You know. At that point, I was just like, okay, I'm done. So uh, that being said, I will not be uh, reading any more High Republic books because I just don't think they will be interesting to me. I won't even take them out from the library. Uh, again, just not interesting to me. Uh, and I know one is actually Claudia Gray's uh, adult novel, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's the next installment that follows uh, Kevin Scott's novel. It's coming out in January. Don't even, I'm not even going to bother with it. It's just, uh, it, it just wasn't my cup of tea. Again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I hated it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say any egregious things about it. I'm not going to be toxic about it. I, it's just not my thing. And uh, seeing what I saw and reading what what I read in here, it, it just it just really has shown me that the High Republic is not for me. Plain and simple. Have you read the High Republic? Uh, I'd really like to hear from you uh, in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think of the High Republic if if you've uh, if you've read it. Um, interesting to hear your thoughts. I, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Uh, but essentially, the main reason I don't like these these books at this point is just because they're not interesting to me. Uh, the, the, I found the, the plot to be boring and I find these characters to be boring. I'm just bored to tears 
with the High Republic. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. If you're listening to this as a podcast, reach out to me on social media, uh, comment, check out the YouTube channel. And for all of my YouTube viewers who've been watching the channel for a long time, check out the podcast, uh, you know, leave a rating. Uh, it'd be much appreciated. Till next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening.